deploying and managing certificates now active directory certificate services you have to install we use the active directory certificate services uh, for providing the certificate based security for our organization network like we can we can use this certificate services to secure the network secure the communication and also secure our data by doing the encryption so first what are the certificates and certificate templates now we have lots of certificate certificate contains what the information about user device uses validity and a key pair so in a certificate we have information about the device or users the certificate given to that users or the uh, devices then it has an information about the usage that means why the what this certificate is used for and how long the certificate is going to be valid and then with the certificate it has a key pair key pair of public and private keys so it has a key pairs so that it can do the it can use the key to encrypt the data encrypt the network encrypt the communication so we have the certificate now the certificate templates templates are actually predefined set uh, predefined settings the certificate templates define what the format and contents of the certificate the process of creating and submi uh, submitting a valid certificate request the security principles that are allowed to read enroll or use auto enrollment for a certificate that will be based on the template the permission that are required to modify a certificate template so uh, normally we have the certificates here under the certification authority management tool so this is our server and in the server we have installed the active directory certificate services also so for managing the certificate services we have to open the uh, from tools certification authority console and when we open the console so we can see this is our server this is our certificate server name sai sasa certification authority it has information about these different containers we have where we have the revoke certificate certificate which is issued to somebody then certificates uh, pending request then fail request and uh, this one is the fail request then this one is a template here under the template container we can see all the templates available uh, templates that defines the different properties like these are the different templates here same as these are the certificates we have like certificate has an information that who has get the certificate this is this is for the user certificate it is a user certificate for user 1 this is the binary certificate it is the binary for the certificate this is the certificate template then this is the serial number certificate effective date expiration date and then many other informations here we should common name and all the information will be we will show here it is about the certificate we can double click on that certificate and it will open the certificate so here we can see the certificate it is issued by the certification authority and issued by, uh, issued to and issued by and valid from this date to this date this is the detail about the certificate uses why this certificate is used validity date and issuer serial number signature every information we can see here we can see properties only we can see uh, we can filter these things critical extensions we can filter all these things or we want to see all then we can see all and the certificate path defines that where uh, this certificate is getting uh, it is it is coming from the certification authority this is our sai ca and it is giving to this this server it is actually giving to the server uh, one of the services of the server it is getting 
that is exchange ca exchange this is for the domain controller certificate this is for the template user mumbai this is custom template we created and here we have the templates now the templates which we saw here it is not only the template we have we have many other templates which is not showing here the templates which is we are showing here it is not that the template we have only template here we have many other templates also available which we can use and we can modify also these templates is to distribute it is to issue the templates which we are seeing here it is actually ready to issue that means these are ready to issue by this certification authority these are different certificates for the different reason and we can use this certificate like these certificates are ready to issue so if someone asks for the certificate they can get this certificate uh, from these these templates but there are many other templates which is also available right now it is not here in this container but if we want then we can right click here and add the new certificate template to issue so when you click on this it will show you other templates which we have and which we can issue so these are the other templates we have and these are the other templates we can use we can enable here enable these templates and then our certification authority server can issue these certificates also now these certificates when you double click on it so you can see the name of the template then you can see certificate purpose what purpose this certificate is for you can see the other information about the certificate also but you are not see any information that you want to modify anything then you will not be able to modify from here so these are the templates available template to issue but there are many other templates which is also available but we have to enable them for issuing them so if we want to issue them then we have to enable them so this certificate templates template versions is in in windows server 2016 so these are the different versions of certificates like version 1 that means created by default when ca is installed it is called version 1 the templates which we saw is the default one which is created by default when the ca is installed that is called version 1 then cannot be modified except from permission or removed so we saw that when we try to go uh, to see the property it is not a, a, any property there we cannot modify anything there then can be duplicate to create version 2 or version 3 templates now we cannot modify those templates which is available by default but we can do what we can copy and duplicate those templates to create version 2 or version 3 templates now version 2 means allow the customization of most settings in the template so when we copy or duplicate the set, uh, the default template so we create the version 2 template which allow us to do customization of different template settings and it also supports the auto enrollment then also we can duplicate the default template to create version 3 template that the version 3 template that means supports the advanced suite b cryptographic settings it will set support the advanced cryptography settings includes the advanced options for encryption digital signatures key exchange and hashing then there is one more version 4 that supports both csps and key storage uh, key storage uh, provider that means uh, connection service point and also key storage provider and support the renewal with the same key so these are these are the manually created certificate templates we create uh, 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 version 4 that means we create the manual one then configuring the certificate template permissions when we duplicate the certificate by from the default one so we have an option to uh, configure the certificate permissions permissions that means full control full control means allow the designated user or group or computer to modify all attributes including ownership and the permissions also so if we give the control full control to any user or group then they can do uh, change the permissions permissions and including ownership also 
then read when we give read permission to any other user or group on that template then uh, it allows a, a designated group or user or a computer to read the certificate in ADDS when enrolling so when it is enrolling it can read the certificate we can use the right permission also when uh, we allow the designated user or group or computer to modify all attributes except the permissions enroll uh, enroll means allow a designated user or group or computer to enroll for the certificate template that means they can only do enrollment they can get the certificate auto enroll allows the designated user or group or computer to receive a certificate through the auto enrollment process auto enrollment that means without the intervention of administrator normally when you enroll so your certificate will remain in the uh, pending request when the administrator approves then only it is approved and uh, Auto enroll will be automatically enrolled to the user. Now configuring the certificate template settings. Each for each certificate template you can customize several settings such as validity time purpose, CSP, private key, exportability, and issuance requirement also. Like what will be the requirement for the user or computer or any services when they try to get the certificate. For the user category, uh, example of the single purpose is like basic EFS. The user certificate used for the basic encryption file system that to do the encrypting the file system, it is used to authenticate the session, session from user to the server. Then it is also used for smart card signing. In. It can also use the user certificate for smart card signing. Example of the per, uh, of a multi purpose is like. Uh, administrator user or smart card user then computer computer uh, uh, certificate are used for the web servers like if is a if the, your computer is a web server then it can use the uh, the certificate for the web servers uh, uh, securing the web servers or also it can use to secure the communication by using the ipsec certificate for ipsec these are for uh, web servers are for the computers and the IPsec is for the domain controllers for example. Option for updating a certificate template. So what is the options we have? First option is we have that the original default uh, template we have. We just change some settings of that and update it. It is like modifying the original certificate template to incorporate the new settings. Whatever the setting we like. Or the setting option the second option is suppressing that means uh, suppressing that means we use the uh, replace the certificate replace one or more certificate templates with an updated certificate template that means we have one certificate but we will do what we will replace that certificate with the new certificate now how to do that how to modify or enable the certificate let's see that Before modifying, first how the user gets the certificate. So user will get the certificate by running the MMC console. And under the MMC console, it will use a tool, a uh, snap in certificate. Now I logged in as an administrator here. So it is giving me option to use the user certificate or computer certificate or service certificate both. Uh, I will use this certificate for the current user then I want to see the computer. The computer option will not be available when you logged in as a normal user account. It is for the local computer I want. If I logged in as a normal user account, so I will only have the permission to use or obtain the certificate for the current user account. But administrator can also obtain the certificate for the uh, computer account also. Now, if this user wants to get the certificate from the certificate authority, then it will right click on this personal container. Under the user or under the computer, it has multiple different containers. Different containers like for the personal certificate, they have the container for the personal certificate. Then they have the container for the trusted root certification authorities where it has all the trusted root certificate servers uh, uh, information certificate here like this is our server certification authority and this is the root certification authority certificate here so it trusts this root CA 
so if the uh, this client is trust this root ca then it will trust the certificates of this root ca also if the client does not trust the root ca then it will not trust any certificate coming from this root ca so first it has to trust the root ca then only it can get the certificate from here from this root ca now this root ca certificate here comes by using uh, comes by active directory it is published through the active directory because we are using the active directory enterprise uh, ca we have configured the enterprise ca and it is linked to the active directory domain so the information about this root ca root ca certificate has published through the active directory so we have not we don't have to do anything here manually to get this root ca certificate it will be automatically available by using the uh, by from the active directory services now if you are using the standalone servers if uh, if you are using the standalone ca then what we have to get this ca certificate here root ca certificate here trusted root ca now i want to get the certificate for the user account so i will right click here and i will say all task request new certificate it will open the wizard before uh, we go next and here we because we are under the active directory domain so it is going to use the active directory enrollment policy here and we will say next then it will show us all the certificate which is available for this current user account now these are the all certificates available for this current user account it can use the user certificate it can enroll for the user certificate it can also enroll for the administrator certificate what is the detail about this so we can see this administrator certificates are used to do the digital signature key enhancement it is for the application policies are like microsoft trust list signing encryption file system secure email client authentication so these are the things which we can use by using this administrator certificate what the user certificate can do user certificate can do almost all those things but a little less than administrator it is only for the encryption file system secure mail and client authentication digital signature and key enhancement but the administrator certificate can do also microsoft trust list signing then this basic efs certificate is for the encryption it is for the encryption file system so this is for key enhancement or we use this to encrypt the file system then this is the recovery agent recovery agent for efs if somebody encrypted the data with using this certificate using the certificate because user use this certificate to encrypt the data now if the user is not able to decrypt the data if the user is deleted or something then what or user is not having the key then what the administrator can do what administrator can use this efs recovery agent certificate and it can use this certificate to decrypt the data which is encrypted by using this efs certificate it is uh, uh, it is actually when you do the encryption so it will t it will tell you to take the backup of that key and if you have not taken the backup and if you have not uh, uh, secured the key then you lost the data so uh, you lost the key or you lost the user then the data will not be recovered and for that you have this recovery agent key now administrator wants to uh, enroll the certificate so it can select this it wants the administrator certificate and remember the administrator certificate all these certificates are auto enrolled so uh, the administrator does not have to do anything on the certificate server it is directly enrolled and this is the certificate which is enrolled here now this is how the uh, enrollment done now we can create the def uh, different template also uh this is the computer account so now if computer if i want to get the computer certificate so i will say i want to get the computer certificate so it will give the certificate based uh, for the computer it will show the certificate for the computer account
so this is the computer account certificate and this is for the local computer so we can get the certificate for the computer account also and what it is used it is used to digital signature it is used to key enhancement client authentication and server authentication now uh, we will do what we will create a custom template for this computer certificate so i'm not enrolling it i'm going to do what i'm going to get the computer certificate i'm going to create the custom uh, template for it now this is the computer certificate it is already there but if i try to do something so the properties i cannot change here but i want to change then what i will do i will go on to right click on this and go to manage when you go to manage it will show you all the available templates here there are many templates available here which we can use to issue and one of them is again computer now if i try to go to properties here then i can see some of the properties but still i cannot do change anything here i can change only the security permissions that who can read and who can enroll the certificate so i want to do change the multiple things so what i will do i will right click on it and i will duplicate the certificate now when you duplicate the certificate you will see the properties of the new template uh, which we created now this new template give me the option to modify all the all the extension all the options like compatibility compatibility that means which operating system till this certificate supports minimum then 2003 server and minimum uh, client certificate for the uh, for the recipient it supports uh, windows xp or server 2003 this is for the certification minimum certification authority server this is minimum client so you can change this also from here this is compatibility feature then in general you can see the name copy of the computer computer certificate you can change the name accordingly whatever the certificate you want i will say mumbai computers and uh, you can change the validity validity is by default one year or renew renewal is six week you can change it whatever you want and it is going to be we we can select to publish the certificate in active directory then we have the option to request handling request handling that means uh, it is the purpose what is the purpose here it is signature and encryption we can change the purpose here also this is the purpose for the certificate it says allow the private key to be exported you want to uh, export the private key uh, allow the private key to be export with the certificate that means the certificate when the computer gets the certificate they can do what they can take the backup of the certificate by exporting the certificate if the computer if the client machine wants to take the backup of the certificate so they can do what they can export the certificate as a file and store it into the secure location they can do that and if you allow them then they can do export the private key also otherwise it is not possible then we have option here and it is actually by, by default auto enroll if you can see here enroll subject without require any user input and we can't change this option because it is computer certificate then we have the cryptography option here we can choose the different cryptography key attestation option uh, assurance requirement that means ca certificate manager approval this is required the following for enrollment by default it is auto enroll and if you want then you can select the ca certificate manager to approve that means when the request when the request comes then the administrator has to approve it otherwise it is not going to be approve the certificate is not going to get the certificate i select this i want to see that so i will do what i will select ca certificate manager will approve then only it is going to approve then same criteria as for the enrollment or valid existing certificate you can change require the following for enrollment 
uh, re-enrollment. If you do the, if the certificate is going to be re-enroll, then the same criteria it is going to use because I have selected same criteria as for the auto uh, re-enrollment. The server server option right now we have only one server so it is not showing any other subject name subject name that means when the, the client machine wants to get the certificate then what the client machine will present they will present the DNS name it is selected by default because it is the computer account in the machine in the user uh, in the user certificate it is selected user principal name so user will present the user's principal name either we can select the email address also but if it is not there if you select something here and if it is not there then it will not allow it will not give the certificate to that user or computer so every computer has the dns name so i will go with the dns name only then here uh, sub suppressed template we can add that certificate issued by this template suppressed certificate issued by all template added to this list we can add list here then we can change some extensions here and the main important option is security so for security who can do what we can decide here first the authenticated user can do what they can read here now this certificate is not for the users so user does not uh, user will not do the enrollment so users cannot do the enrollment because it is not the user certificate it is a computer certificate so who can do the enrollment so here we can select the domain computers group domain computers group can do the enrollment it is the default option because it is the it is a duplicate template of the default template then auto enrollment you can select the auto enrollment also enterprise user can do what it can do read write and enroll domain computer can enroll domain admin can read write and enroll administrator can also do only read and write and authenticated users all the other users can do only read now if we want to give some user or group separate permission then we can add it from here like if i don't want to give this certificate to every computer in the domain so i will remove the permission of enroll from here domain computers and i will add the group of the computer here that means i will create a group and make that group uh, the make the computers member of that group and then add that group here and give the group permission to enroll so only that group of computers will do the enrollment right now all the domain computers will do the enrollment so this is i created now i will press ok now the new certificate template is added here but it is not available if i close this so it is not available here so we have to make sure this other template is available here and for that we will do add the template here with the right click on this certificate template container select new certificate to issue and from the list we will select this new template which we created or modify now it is available here and it is available to issue now when the client computer asks for the uh, the certificate uh, computer certificate then it will get the option of this certificate uh, this template also let's see that now now again from the windows 10 machine we have opened the uh, mmc console and this is for the local computer and i want to get the certificate now so i will go on to select all tasks and request for the new certificate active directory enrollment policy Now previously it was showing this default computer certificate now it is also showing the certificate which we have added or modified. So either we can get this one or this one and also it shows all those templates the, the templates it does not show the templates which is avail not available actually. If you want to see that you can click on this 
but you cannot select these templates because it is not available for this computer account so I want this one the one which I, I have uh, added and I will go on to select enroll and now this one is enrolled here but it is saying what enrollment is pending now why it is pending because it is waiting for the approval approval of the certificate manager so I will say finish here and I will go to the server there and on the server if I go to this pending request I can see the certificate is here it is waiting for the approval because we have decided we have selected the option in the certificate template that it needs the CA managers approval first so it is for this win 10 and it is coming from this windows 10 machine request so what i will do i will right click on it and when i go to all task it has an option to issue or deny so if the administrator say okay i want to issue this so it will click issue or if it is if it is unknown request then it will deny also i have issued and when we go to check the issued certificate so we can see the certificate is now issued to this user and we can see the date and time also that issuing effective date so now the certificate is issued to this windows 10 machine for the machine account so this is how we do what we create the templates now after adding or modifying the certificate managing certificate deployment and revocation and recovery first certificate enrollment method what are the methods we have first auto enrollment auto enrollment that means the automate uh, the user uh, automate the request retrieval and the storage of certificate for domain based computers it is it is automatic it is automatically retrieve the certificate enroll the certificate and store the certificate in according to the different containers uh, the computer have manual enrollment in this manual enrollment the request certificate by using the certificate console or cert request dot exe cert request dot exe when the requester cannot communicate directly with the ca then ca web enrollment in the web enrollment the request uh, to request the certificate from a website that is located on a ca and to issue certificate when in auto enrollment is not available so when the auto enrollment is not available then you can use the web enrollment also then enroll on behalf in this it is to provide the IT staff with the right to request certificate on behalf of another user that is enrollment agent it is called so we can give a user permission like there is an IT staff and that staff wants to get the certificate for different user so it can do uh, it request the certificate on behalf but for doing that it has to have the enrollment agent certificate that means we have to make that user as a enrollment agent now overview of the certificate auto enrollment how it is done so the certificate template is configured for allow enroll and auto enroll permission for users who receive the certificates so we we have this certificate configured into the template is configured with these options like allow enroll and auto enroll permission for users who, who is going to receive the certificate so first we have to configure that and all those certificate which is by default configured with that setting that will be doing the auto enrollment then the ca is configured to issue the template so also the ca the certification authority is configured to in issue the certificate then an ads Actually, domain services group policy object should be created to enable the auto enrollment. So, for doing the auto enrollment from the Actually domain services, we will configure the group policy. The group policy object should be linked to the appropriate site domain or organizational unit which we want to give the auto enroll, which we want to do the auto enrollment. Then, the user or computer receive the certificate during the next group policy refresh interval. So, after doing all these when we configure the group policy and all that 
then the user will get, or computer will get the certificate automatically when the next time group policy will be refreshed then what is an auto enrollment agent a enrollment agent enrollment agent is a user account used to request the certificates on behalf of another user account an auto uh, enrollment agent must possess a certificate based on the enrollment agent template and enrollment agent are typically members of corporate or it security departments and the scope of an enrollment agent can be limited to specific users or security groups or specific certificate templates we can configure the user to get the auto enrollment so we can make this possible by giving that user the certificate template called enrollment agent so there is a template which is called enrollment agent so first we have to make sure the user has that certificate then the certificate templates which we want to provide by uh, which we want to enroll through that user we will give the permission in the security we will give the permission only to that user uh, only the user to that uh, security uh, uh, that uh, templates specific templates that means first what you have a enrollment agent certificate here you when you go to manage so we have here enrollment agent certificate so first we have to give the user this enrollment certificate uh, enrollment agent certificate this is for the user this is for the computer then whatever the uh, enrollment uh, uh, whatever the template we want to enroll through this users we will do what we have to give the permission for it and permission that means uh, we have to go to the user template like for example i want to give the user template so i will go to security and add that user here and give that user right to do the enroll and how the user will ask for the certificate on behalf of other user so when the user try to request for the certificate it gets the option here under the advanced option it gets the option that enroll on behalf of so it can ask uh, is, is, is this user the user which is logged in here on this windows 10 machine it can ask for the enrollment on behalf of the other user but it can do only when it has the certificate uh, the enrollment agent certificate available for this user and also it has permission to enroll other uh, certificates now this is how the certificate revocation works now revocation means what it is actually means simply cancellation so when we cancel the certificates so it becomes revoked so how it works these are the following steps for the revoking certificate first the certificate is revoked so first the as me administrator will do what when it is not required then administrator will revoke the certificate and then a list the revocation list certificate revocation list is published and a client computer verifies the certificate validity and revocation so whenever the clients those clients who is having those certificate they will see the uh, they will see the revocation list and they will decide what is the validity and what is the revocation date so if we want to revoke the certificate then the administrator will revoke the certificate by right clicking on it all the revoked certificate will go to here and from here it is going to be published this is the list of revoked certificates and the revocation date effective revocation date also is available now if the administrator wants to revoke some certificate then it will do what it will right click on it and then it will go to all task and it can say revoke this certificate now revoke means it is actually cancel so unspecified what is the reason for this so you can say unspecified key compromise the key may be these are the different reasons can be like key is compromised for the certificate ca is compromised change of affiliation suppressed case of operation certificate on hold whatever or you can go for unspecified then here you can decide the date and time when it is going to be revoked you can change the date according to uh, whenever you want to revoke the certificate and that time it is going to be revoked 
I will say directly now and now it is revoked and it is now a certification list. Now the client who all the clients who is having this certificate now they know that this certificate is now revoked from this date and this time. Next is overview of key archival and recovery. Key archival that means private keys can get lost. That means when we use the, when we install the CA, so with the CA we have a private key which is used to encrypt all the certificates, all the sign all the certificates. That key is very important. So we have to make sure the key is available every time. And also when the user gets the certificates, with the certificate they also get the private and public key. So the key is very important for that user also. So if suppose the user gets the certificate and it try to uh, encrypt something with that certificate and if the key is lost then whatever the data it has encrypted by the user will be will not be recovered. So what it can do and how it is going to be uh, lost? It is going to lost because the user profile is deleted. If suppose the user profile is deleted the key will also be deleted because the user gets the ticket, uh, user gets the certificate through the profile. So when the user gets the certificate, it is through the profile, it remains with the user profile. So if the profile is deleted, the certificate will also be deleted, the key will also be deleted. Then the, an operating system is reinstalled, if the operating system, the whole operating system is reinstalled, then also the key will be lost. A disk is corrupted, then also the key lost. A computer is lost or is stolen, then also the key and everything will be lost. So it is critical that you archive the private keys for certificate that are used for encryption. So whenever we do the encryption, we have to make sure that we have archived the key, we have backup the key also. Otherwise, the key recovery agent is needed for the recovery key, for the key recovery. So we can use the key recovery agent which is needed to recover the key. So for the clients, they should use to backup the key and for the CA also, it should backup the main private key of that CA. And for that, the CA need the key recovery agent. And users can do uh, export the key. User can normally export the key and take the backup. Then key archive must be configured on the CA and on the certificate templates both. Certificate templates from the client side and the CA. Uh, key archival from the CA from the certificate administrator. Key recovery is a two phase process. First, key retrieval and key recovery. So, key, are, uh, key, key recovery agent certificate must be protected first. So, first we have to get the key recovery agent certificate for the user. Then, what it can use to recover the key, it can use to archive the key of the certification authority server. Then, the normal certificate templates they can use to recover the key, they can use to uh, take the backup, archive the key from the certificate also. Like for example, for example, this is uh, our Windows 10 machine and the user administrator is getting this key, this certificate here. Now with the certificate, it has also the key. Now this user, uh, the administrator used to encrypt the data with using this key, this certificate. Like for example, or any user, any user will do the same thing. If suppose user administrator do what? Create something here. Now it wants to encrypt this, so when it go to the properties, advanced, encryption and encrypt it. Now it is encrypted the data, it is secured the data. Now it has secured by the key which is, which, which this administrator has got. It got the key and now it has encrypted the data by using that key. This is the administrator certificate 
which is used to encrypt this data now this is the same certificate and this is the same key it is used to recover the data if suppose this administrator has uh, the profile this is if suppose this is a normal user and the profile for the user is deleted or something then this data will never be recovered it will be encrypted every uh, for the long uh, for the lifetime it is not going to be recovered because the key is lost so the administrator should take the backup of the key they can take the backup of the key by right clicking on the data directly and going into the properties advanced detail and this is the certificate so it can take the backup of this certificate key from here following the procedure or it can take the backup from this certificate console and the certificate it will right click go to the open the certificate it will see the detail and here it is having the option to copy it can copy the wizard will open next now it says you want to export the private key also or not or you want to you don't want to export the private key you just want to export the certificate so if it is wanted to take the backup of the key also then it will do what it will export the key and export as this it can put the password on it so if anyone try to retrieve the key without the knowledge of this user then it is not going to retrieve because uh, it uh, because of the password if the, if it is not know the password then it will not be able to recover i am saving it on the document and it is successfully exported so this is how it will do what the templates backup normal certificate templates backup so if anyone if the profile is deleted or some uh, because of some problem the key lost then the key will be still there it will see we will secure the key from here we will put it into the secure location even if the system even if the whole system is formatted reinstalled then still we get the key from the secure place and then we can recover it recover the data from the key this is the 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 archival of this are this is a archiving of the template key from the client side now from the server the main private key it must also be uh, it must be also taken the archive so when you go to the properties of the ca we have an option to take the archive we have an option to take the backup of archive uh, backup or archive the certificate key here now when you go to this recovery agent here it says do you, uh, do the following when you certificate request includes the key archive now do not archive the key and archive the key now i want to archive the key here so when i select this and i want to see now when i select this what it says here number of recovery agent to use or key recovery agent certificate so we have to provide here first re key recovery agent certificate otherwise it is not going to be archive so for key uh, presenting the key recovery agent certificate you have to add here and it is saying here the key recovery agent selection please select the key recovery agent certificate here so which certificate we are going to uh, use here we can use the this is showing here the server certificate the server certificate that means this is the domain controller certificate given to the domain controller we can use this certificate this is also used to key recovery agent we can see the properties of the certificate here this is the certificate issued to the domain controller here issued by the certification authority and you have a private key that correspond to correspond to this certificate and these are the key usages this is the certificate path we can use this certificate but you can see here it is showing cross status is not loaded 
so it is not supporting that certificate so actually we have to have the key recovery agent certificate available here now where you will get that so there is a template there is a key recovery agent certificate template is available and this is the certificate key recovery agent certificate template so the user account which has this template it can be added into the key recovery agent so for doing that we have to add this template here not manage and the user account will get this template this certificate will be able to do the key recovery and also we can configure the automatic key archival this is the steps to do the to configure the automatic key archival like configure the key recovery agent certificate template first that which we have added then designate the key recovery agent in role for the key ra key recovery agent certificate so uh, designate the key recovery agent certificate uh, to be uh, enrolled then enable the key recovery agent on the ca and configure necessary certificate templates for the key archive so after doing this enabling the key recovery agent certificate on the same domain controller what i will do i will open the mmc add the certificate here for the user account and i will try to uh, request the new certificate and this time i will i want this key recovery agent certificate i am giving this certificate to the administrator now the administrator is enrolling this okay it is pending so i have to approve it also now after that what i will do i will now i can configure this i can add this here into the key recovery agent so that it is it will do automatically take the archival of the private key okay it is not showing here okay key recovery agent this is the key recovery agent we can see here this is our key recovery agent certificate so this is the key recovery agent certificate we have added here apply you say you must restart that the activity certificate services so you say yes and now it is restarting it restarting the activity certificate services and it is going to configure the auto key archive and now it is okay here and now it is valid also and fine so this is configuring automatic key archival for the ca so the ca key will be archive automatically with the using of the administrator uh, the key recovery agent certificate 
now using the certificate in a business environment in a business environment that means we can use a certificate for the ssl the purpose of securing the connection with ssl is to protect data during the communication we use normal website like when we configure the site it is a normal site normal sites use the normal http it is not secure for securing the http communication we use the ssl and ssl by using the ssl we configure the https but for securing that we need for configuring the ssl we need the certificate so for ssl a certificate a certificate must be installed on the server and be aware of our trust issues also trust issues also that means the certificate which we have issued or installed on the server on the web server that must be trusted by all the clients otherwise they will give you the error that the certificate is not trusted ssl works in the following steps like the user types the https url then the web server sends its ssl certificate to the user then the client performs a check of the server certificate then the client generates the symmetric encryption key and the client encrypts this key uh, key with the server's public key and the server uses its, its private key to decrypt the encrypted symmetric key so when the server when the user try to use the http site they give the url and the server the web server will do what it will send the ssl certificate and for that the user server has to have the ssl certificate available it is it will obtain the ssl certificate from the certification authority server ca then the client performs what the check for the server certificate it will check the certificate through the ca that this certificate which is server sending is valid or not and if it is valid and genuine then the client generates the symmetric encryption key with the help of this uh, certificate and the client encrypts this key with the server's public key the public key is coming from this ssl certificate and then server issues its private key to decrypt the encrypted system uh, symmetric key then the communication from the client and server will be encrypted through the http s protocol okay we have a web server available so we can check that web server here and the server is a server 2 and you can see the site is running there so this is our web server and this is a default site it is running on that server but this site is not secure here it says here it is not secure because it is not having any secure feature it is actually normal https site and it says it is not secure because it is not using http h uh, https now if we want to secure this site so the site if you want to secure this site then we have to provide the certificate for the site and this is what our web server this is our is server which is running the site this is server 2 and it is not secure because it is not having any certificate installed so if we want to get the certificate and secure the site so we will go to this internet information services manager console here and uh, it is running the default site so i have not configured any site it is running only the default site but first it needs the certificate so we select the server here and here you will get the cert certificate for the server so when you double click on it there is no certificate here so it has to uh, get the certificate from the server now web server do what they can generate the local certificate also like self sign certificate but that is not that secure so they have the option to create the self sign certificate it is not secure because the certificate will remain in their own machine so how they will get the certificate it can request the certificate from directly here from the is manager or it can also request the certificate by using the mmc and certificate console from this certificate console and selecting the computer account and under the computer account it can ask for the web hosting certificate 
now web hosting certificate uh, that means this, there is a certificate for hosting the website or if it is it can do it from here it will request for the certificate and because it is the IIS server also so it will get the option to have web server certificate it is having the computer certificate option available it can enroll for the computer certificate but that is computer certificate that is not web server certificate for web server certificate it can enroll from the IS manager it has enrolled the certificate here now it can enroll for the web server certificate also and that it can do from this IIS manager now for uh, for getting that what it will do here now you can see the certificate is available the user certificate is uh, the computer certificate is now showing here but it needs the certificate for the web services so for that it can do what it can create the certificate request it can create the domain certificate so there is an option to import also it can uh, use the self signed certificate now I want to get the certificate from the certification authority server our server so I will say I want to create the certificate request now under the certificate request we have to give the common name let's say I will give the common name of our server this is our server 2 or we should make the common name like different I will say this will be okay I will go with server 2 the name then organization name whatever your organization name city state country and then you can get the certification part now specify the file name for the certificate request now requesting the certificate from the file it is going to request the certificate from the file or what we can do we can create the domain request domain request that means we are the member of the domain so we will get the request from our domain our domain CA again I will go for server 2 this will be the common name and the other informations now here it is saying that who is your certification authority so you will select this this is our certification authority and we can see this information because we have already uh, get the certificate for the computer account so our server knows that this is our certification authority server and this will be the friendly name for the certificate friendly name I will say this is my web host and then I am going to request it now it is requesting the certificate from the, the certification authority and try to get the certificate from there now we have this web certificate also available so the options for getting the certificates are here like we can create the self signed certificate we can create the certificate request by using the file then we can create the domain request also domain request will go to uh, our domain organizations 
certificate authority server and get the certificate from there now this certificate we can use to secure our website right now it is not secure if you still try to access the secure site this one is not secure if i try to access the secure site that means i will give https colon slash slash remember https i am giving and then i will mention the server name so it will say that it is not available because we have not configured the secure site so after getting the certificate we have to configure the site to use the certificate to secure and for that we will go to sites and this is our site and under the site we have to go here to map the site it is it is for browsing here and here we go for the binding setting so it is right now binded with port number 80 http we can see now i will go to binds and we can see here right now it is only for 80 which is not secure so we can edit this and in we can change it to https then http will not work or if you want both should work then you want to http and https both then you can add new so i am adding new https and this is for the ip address let's say i will use for this and you can see the port number changes to 443 the host name you can change either now here you have to select the certificate now this is our machine account uh, this is our machine certificate computer certificate and this is our web certificate so i will select the web certificate here and then okay now the site is secured and it is now https now when i go to client and try to access the site now it is already accessed here so when i try to access the site now it is it is allowing me it is accessing here it is saying your connection is pri isn't private it is actually accessing the site is available but because of the trust it is not uh, allowing us to access it but i will go to advance and i will say continue with the unsafe site now the https is working here but still it is saying not secure you can see the certificate is available it is also we are uh, we are securing the site but still because of the trust problem it is not accepting the certificate here so the certificate which is used by the web server it has to be uh, accepted or trusted to all the clients those wants to use that site otherwise they will remain with this not secure sign so if you want to if you don't want to see this not secure site then we have to make sure that trust the the certificate which is uh, this web server is having is also available for these use these client machines they should also trust the certificate so this is the certificate and we have to ensure the identity of the certificate here on these local machines then using the certificate for digital signatures the user can also use the certificate to do the digital signatures providing the putting the digital signature on the documents digital signature ensure that content is not modified during the transport and the identity of the author is verified these digital signatures are used to do what to make sure that document is not modified during the transport and also make sure the identity of the document author digital signatures works in the following steps first when the author digitally signs a document or a message the operating system on his or her computer creates the message in cryptographic digest then the cryptographic digest is the is then encrypted by using the author's private key and added to the end of the document or message the recipient uses the author's public key to decrypt the cryptographic digest and compare it to the cryptographic digest created on the recipient 
कंप्यूटर यूजर्स नीड टू हैव अ सर्टिफिकेट दैट इज यूज दैट इज बेस्ड ऑन अ यूजर टेम्पलेट to use the digital signature so if the user wants to do the digital sign to the document they must have the certificate user template certificate otherwise they are not able to do this now i am logging in here on the client machine as a user 2 account and uh, we'll try to sign the document with this but for signing the document this user must have this uh, uh, user template certificate otherwise it will not be able to sign the certificate uh sign the document now uh, on this user i have this document here uh, i will do what i will open this document and i will try to sign this document now this is the document and i want to sign this document so for signing the document user will do what it will go to files and protect document under that it will have option to add the digital signature now when you try to add the digital signature it says that you don't have any my digital id you have to get the digital id first now that means what it want to get the digital certificate for it and it is saying you can go to microsoft partners to get the digital certificate if you say yes it will take you to the online sites online certification authorities to get the certificate digital certificate for the digital sign but we are member of the domain and we have our own domain server our own domain actuality uh, certificate services server so we can get the certificate for doing this digital signing now for that the user must have the user uh, user template set now when i try to see mmc console and i'll select the certificate to add it will directly add current user because this is the normal user account now under this personal there is no certificate available for this user and that is why it is not allowing this user to do the digital signature so what i will do i will right click here i will request for the certificate and this user must have the certificate uh, user certificate to do the digital signature to add the digital signature now it has two options available one basic efs basic efs which will allow this user to do the encryption file encryption uh, encrypting file system and uh, this user certificate will allow this user to do the file encryption also and also do the digital signature so i will use this user certificate and i want to enroll the user certificate now it is enrolled and now what i can do i can go on to protect add digital signature and i will get this option and what it says here commitment type like what you want to say it is created approve this document you want to just approve this document or you want to say created this document created and approved that means this is the final version no modification is needed if anyone modified the document then the digital signature will not match and approving the document by users uh, information so users information will be added that means if any information it changes then if somebody else trying to send the document behalf of the other this user then it will not be accepted because the digital signature of this user is uh, it is this user's digital signature we can see the detail here we can add the detail here also that this is the role title address address city you can add all these information here also and then you can sign it now this document is signed by this users digital signature has been successfully signed so it is now protected it is the signed document you can view the signature here and this is the signature for the user if you add other informations then you can see the informations 
and the signature detail so whoever check the document they have to see the signature that okay this is the signed document you can see the signature and this is the final it is says marked as final you can add it anyway if you have permission but when you add it this the signature will be mismatch so this is how it will protect and integrate the document by adding the digital signature then user can use the certificate for content encryptions also like encrypting encryption protect the data from unauthorized access and efs uses the certificate for encrypting the file system so when we encrypt the file system uh, encrypt the data we can encrypt it with this efs certificate so basic efs certificate we can use or we can use a user certificate to encrypt the data and to send an encrypted message you must process the recipient public key so if you want to get the data if you want to see the data then you have to get the recipient's public key also that means those users key the users key will be added into the document those users can see the data if the users key is or is not there then the users will not be able to see the data but if the data key the key is not uh, if the users profile is deleted or machine is formatted then user itself is not able to open so the recovery agent can be used to open the data so how it can uh, it like for example this is the user user 2 and it wants to secure some data so it can do what uh, let's create some data here now i have added something here and this user wants to encrypt the data so it will go to the properties of that document advance and encrypt now this is encrypted only this user can read the data any other user they will not be able to read the data because they don't have the key there so only the users who can see the data those users key is here so if i want to if i want that user one should also read the data then i have to add the user one's key here and i have to have the key for that user or the certificate for that user otherwise i will not be able to uh, allow that user to view the data but by default the administrator is uh, is is what recovery agent and it can see the data uh we have the recovery user administrator's uh, certificate here so if i add if i want to add that user uh, administrator can see the data i can add the certificate of that user here so it will do what it will it can able to see the data now any other user let's say example if user 2 comes i will log in as a user 2 now i will log in as a user 1 this is another normal user account and if it it will try to see the data which is encrypted by user 1 uh, user 2 so it will not be able to see because the encryption key is user 2 encryption key uh, it is uses the user 2 certificate so only user 2 can see the data now user 1 try to go to the c drive and uh, this is the data try to open the data is not able to open the data because of that certificate it will try to go to the properties advance and detail so it sees that this is encrypted by this user and uh, this is what administrator is uh, is a recovery certificate having the recovery certificate but the user one is not having any if user one try to add something it cannot add anything
but when an administrator comes now i will log in as a administrator i am logging in as a administrator now it will take a little time and administrator try to see the data now it can also not see the data but administrator can do what it has a recovery certificate so in case if the user lost the key if the key is not available then the administrator can do what it can use this it can use the recovery agent certificate to recover the data now administrator has added this recovery agent certificate now administrator has added its own certificate and try to open the and it is not opening so administrator has to use the recovery agent certificate recovery agent certificate administrator will get from the certificate server it has to ask for the certificate it will go for the console for the user account and it has to request for this recovery agent certificate right now the certificate which this user has the administrator has is the administrator certificate that is not the the uh, recovery agent certificate so right now the user has this administrator certificate and this administrator certificate is used to digital sign and uh, doing the encryption securing email and authentication but for recovering the efs e encrypted file system it needs this recovery agent certificate and what it do it is to recover the file it is enrolled now it has this recovery file recovery and now what it will do it is still not opening it will select the certificate see the detail what purpose is this certificate for okay this is still not the the certificate which we want so user can use that certificate to encrypt recovery agent can also be used to recover the data if the main certificate is not there the other uses for the certificates are like like for authentication you can use the certificate for the user and devices authentication also in the network and application access scenarios such as like vpn when we configure the vpn we can use this certificates we can use the eap tls pap peap uh we can use the network access protection with ipsec outlook web applications 
mobile device authentication we can use this for authentications then also implement we can implement and manage the smart cards smart cards that means uh, what is a smart card so smart cards are miniature computer with limited storage and processing capabilities and it is embedded in the plastic card about the size of the credit card so they are like just a credit cards and we can use this smart card to provide the options for multi factor authentication provide the enhanced security over the password and valid smart card and pin must be used together how does this smart card authentication works this smart card can be used for the interactive signing to the active directory services client authentication remote signing and offline signing both interactive signing steps are like first the key sign in request goes to the uh, the lsa then which is forwarded to the kerberos uh, package then kdc verifies the certificate the kdc verifies the digital signature on the authentication service then kdc performs an active directory domain services query to locate the user account then kdc generates the random encryption key to encrypt the tgt and then kdc signs the uh, uh, signs the reply with its private key and sends it to the user what is the virtual smart card now remember physical smart cards are there but we can use the virtual smart card also the smart card infrastructure might be expensive it needs windows server 2012 active directory certificate services introduced the introduce this virtual smart card virtual smart card use the capability of the tpm chip tpm chip which we have in our machines in our laptops and it uses that as a uh, as a as a we can use uh, as that tpm chip as a smart card as a virtual smart card so our laptop our laptop itself becomes the smart card for that no cost for the buying smart card and smart card readers the computer acts like a smart card private keys are protected by the cryptographic capabilities of the tpm chip enrolling certificate for smart cards before you issue smart card define the method of enrolling set a smart card certificates smart card certificates enrollment requires some manual intervention for smart card enrollment define the certificate template for the smart card there is a template for this a smart card template is there so we have to define that first enable the template then enroll one or more users for the uh, enrollment agent certificate then configure the enrollment section and start the enroll on behalf of wizard so that we can uh, enroll the certificate for the smart card on behalf of the user ensure the user changes their personal pin after enrollment a smart card management a smart card management task are like assurance revocation renewal blocking and unblocking duplication suspension and then the microsoft identity manager to issue smart card to users to store information in a sql database manage the revocation renewal up uh, unblocking suspension and reinstatement procedure provide the user and administrator with the web based self service smart card management interface and manage smart card printing with appropriate hardware implement workflows for each management task this is the job for the manage microsoft in identity manager so this is what this is how we can manage and deploy these certificates so this is what the managing certificate deployment revocation and recovery of the certificates we do